Hey guys, um, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number 15 on user interface. Um, so I'm gonna just do this quick tutorial on how to build a user interface using the library control p5. This is again one of the libraries that I use all the time and as we have done in previous tutorials we will go to the processing website reference libraries and here um, I'm gonna search for it actually so control p5 right so here we can go to the control p5 website where you can download this library right um, and following as we have seen in tutorial number 10 um, you can go and check if your library is properly installed by clicking on sketchbook libraries and you should have something like this saying control p5 examples and there's many examples of different elements that you can actually uh, look at and use for your user interface. One that we will actually see today, I mean, the only one, it's this one, the slider. It's a very popular kind of user interface to actually control data. Um, so let's see how to do that. Right? So first of all, as we have done before, we're going to do some setup. Sorry about that, setup. Room. Six hundred right, so we're having um, a very classical setup um, and we're gonna import this library. How do we do that? By typing the keyword import and the name of the library is control capital P5, right, so dot, uh, start and semicolon, uh, and in this way we're uh, importing the library, check that this is working, uh, if it's not working, refer to tutorial number 10, um, where we see how to install the contents of a specific library inside the document folder, the processing folder inside the document folder, um, in order to have access to any kind of external library, right? Um, so, what do we do with this? Okay, we uh, control p5 allows us to build an instance of the class control p5, right? Um, that is basically a controller interface. Um, we can give the instance of this class anything, so for for the understanding of that we can really put anything, I will use again J control, right? Anything. Um, so this is the first step of how to load this library, right? Again, the same steps that calling any class, we declare it. Um, and this will be like a sequence of operations that we'll be doing quite a bit, actually. Like any time you build your own class you will realize that you have to declare it first then you have to initialize it so we're gonna initialize this is number two um, so how do we do that? Uh, control p5 now we're gonna say j control equals a new instance of the class control and we need to specify uh, what would be uh, this is the constructor the constructor um, asks for exactly the same that PC cam actually asks is what is the instance of the the P applet uh, class that we're working in basically the processing sketch that we're working on so we have to type this this is the keyword for our um, control to be initialized so at this stage we should have black window working quite properly but we also get a message here saying uh, we're using version 0.5.4 of control p5 that has been initialized. This instance of the class jcontrol allows us to build different elements um, in our interface. 
Um, so let's do one of them. Let's say a slider. So we're going to type slider. This is the class type, a class type that it's a, a subclass of jcontrol. So we will call this s, right? Equals um, jcontrol. This is meaning that we are accessing something inside jcontrol by typing point, right? So jcontrol dot add slider. And this function of the class jcontrol allow uh, will build a slider for us, right? So this um, class uh, slider s, we have this function add slider inside this class uh, to actually build it. Um, a slider requires quite a bit of information to actually appear on the screen. Um, so the first bit of information is the name of this slider. Um, we have to give a name, let's say we'll call this B color. Right? Um, or should be underscore color, something like that. Uh, because I want to control the background color with this slider. Um, then we will define a comma. Um, we will define the minimum value of this slider. So I will say zero. The next value that it will ask me for it will be the maximum value. So I will say 255. And then it will ask me for the default value. So I would say something like 100. Um, then I believe it's going to ask me for the position, the x and y position of this slider. Um, so I'm going to say 10,10. 10 and then the width and the height. Uh, so I'm going to say 100 width and 10 of height. So let's see if this is working. Right. So at this stage, we can see what we got. OK. Uh, we have this element here in the screen that it's interactive. We can see that we can move it around. Um, and it goes from 0 to 255, that's the maximum value. Um, it starts when we first call it, it will be by default in 100. The location, this location here, it's 10, 10 pixels from the 0, 0 coordinate in processing, and the width of it is 100 pixels with a height of 10, right? Um, so this is all the information that a slider needs to be built. Um, right now, this B color is the name of it, right? So we can put any name here. Uh, but this is not controlling anything. This is just an um, interactive bit uh, of code that we, just by dragging with the left mouse button, we can just move around, right? Um, so the next step would be, like, how can this slider control anything? For um, the purpose of just clarity and maybe seeing it a little bit better. I'm going to do it a little bit thicker here and maybe give a 200. So we can see that the same slider, I can change the size of it. So if you've seen these kind of videos with sliders, it allows for really kind of changing some variables and working um, real time and exploring some pieces of your code that could be quite different depending on the variable. So I think these sliders are a very good idea re really early in the game to, to explore some of the patterns or some of the behaviors that you're working with uh, interactively. But we want to see how to define a variable that would use the information of this slider, right? So let's, let's do a variable, something like an um, uh, integer or float. Let's do an integer um, that it would be called b color, right? So b color it's an integer that will be equals to zero. Um, so we're gonna use this integer value as the background color, right? So right now it's just controlling. There's no relation between these two things. It's just defining the back, uh, the background. So if we put a hundred or something like a hundred here, this variable will control the background 
of our sketch. What I want to do now is link this variable with this slider. Um, how do I do that? I use this name in the string name of the slider. Exactly the same name. I copy pasted it. Um, so I'm sure that the name of the slider is exactly the name of my variable. In this case, a global variable defined before the setup, so it's visible uh, all over my script. So if I run this now, I can see that my slider is controlling the background color of the screen. This slider, just by adding it here, will be active on all over our script. Um, so you can read through the documentation how to uh, how to add different kind of uh, elements of user interface and I think that this library is really really good to to develop your own interface and it has many different options you can see the website again uh, uh, where it shows you all the possible um, different elements for a user interface and some different projects that have been using this um, interface um, so you can get some inspiration of how to use it yourself so this is the video on sliders